I remember when I was younger being huddled with my friends around my family's CRT television, our noses practically pressed against the staticky glass as we duked it out in GoldenEye on the N64 or Custom Robo on the GameCube, Star Wars Battlefront on the PS2. I remember bringing my 360 to my friend's house to play 4v4 SWAT in Halo 2 with nothing but a thin drywall slab separating the two teams from literally tearing each other apart after a brutal kill. Not even kidding, things got so heated that one of my friends threw the other through that wall like a stage transition in Mortal Kombat. I remember the only time we'd break from the game was to grab a bite to eat, or to watch one of us push on in Conqueror's Bad Fur Day and ruminate on the incredibly age inappropriate jokes, most of which flew right over our heads. Conquer, honey. Fancy going for a bounce? About. Okay. I remember in high school getting nearly 20 friends in my class to sign up on the same World of Warcraft server, and how every conversation in the game would be about school, and how every conversation at school would be about the game. It's been a couple of years now, and now as an adult, I defy the theory that you stop playing games when you grow up, whatever growing up is supposed to mean. I don't have parents that set limits on how much screen time I'm allowed to have anymore. I have a steady disposable income to spend on whatever I want, and I work from home, which means I can sneak off and game during the workday without my boss peeking over my shoulder. Don't judge me, you do it too. And my friends are in very similar boats. Maybe some of you are too. So you would think that with all these past experiences and newfound adult freedoms, that I would be playing even more games than ever. But I realized recently that I don't play games with my friends anymore. And I really wanted to understand why. So I set out to find out and to fix it. And it turns out that the reason is actually kind of scary. See, I love games. I love being immersed in a new place. I love the process of exploring and learning the rules of a world that's brand new to me. I experience many of the same emotions and feelings exploring in the real world as I do in the digital world but video games are right there at my fingertips after a long day of work. Without all the travel planning and the real life expenses and the long plane rides, like many of you, I probably own more video games than I can reasonably play in my lifetime. They're gathered from a total lack of self-control and from the good old days of Humble Bundles that had no right to be that good. Hundreds of untouched worlds stacked one on top of another, a new frontier after new frontier that may forever go unexplored by me. I collect these worlds, these games, partially because I've always been a bit of a game generalist. While I was hunting puzzle pieces in Kirby Star Allies during the day, I was moonlighting as a brutal killer in Hitman at night. Yet somehow I put over 100 hours in Elden Ring and less than 5 hours into the entire Dark Souls series combined. See, I go through these phases when it comes to game genres. For a while, I was lost in open world story games like Horizon Zero Dawn and Breath of the Wild, free to adventure through massive worlds with hundreds of quests and collectibles. Then I fell deep into simulation games like Satisfactory and The Sims, where I'm able to endlessly be creative and build. In college, I took a break from gaming altogether, just for a little while, don't freak out, and yet I found myself drawn back into games like Mario Kart and Overcooked. Games where I could bring people together to laugh and hang out and play together. I love bringing new people together over a game. There's nothing like the banter during a split screen co-op sesh or the cheers of your team over Discord after a chicken dinner. I've seen friendships forged and destroyed by a game of Smash and throwing a group of strangers together in a kitchen has the chance to create lifelong memories. When I can get butts in seats, it's really easy to fill a game like Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. Is a game with simple controls that are easy to pick up and learn without much of a barrier to entry. You don't need a deep understanding of each level or to have memorized several complex button combos. You just need to pick up the controller and learn as you play. In fact, it's probably the cost of the controllers themselves that are the biggest barrier to couch co-op. Rather, it's complex online games like first-person shooters, RTSs, fighting games, MMOs that see the least play between my friends. These were staples of my experience in gaming. I would stay up for hours and hours in Battlefield with my friends on the line. We would organize StarCraft matches and mini tournaments, but none of that happens anymore. We chat and hang out together in person. I see them pop up in my Steam friends notifications, but we rarely meet online. And after a while wondering why, I finally figured out why I don't play games with my friends anymore. 
it's because there are too many games. There was a time in gaming history when you could pretty much play all of the latest popular releases if you had the money to do it. You could dip your toes into a few different games, and if you didn't like the multiplayer experience, then at least you got a fantastic single player campaign to fall back on. There were really only a smattering of popular first person shooters, MMOs had really just been introduced to gamers, and real time strategy games were still exceptionally niche. At the time, you could probably have named every popular title in a given genre. This was before indie and AA publishers really existed the way that they exist today. Today, the gaming landscape is completely different. In popular first-person shooters alone, you have Call of Duty, Battlefield, Counter-Strike, Halo, Apex, uh, Tarkov, Overwatch, Valorant, RS6, Paladins, Titanfall, Back for Blood, Gears of War, Destiny, not to mention more recent titles like Splitgate and Super People. Am I missing any? No. <gasps> The success of gaming in the past 10 years has led to an explosion in the number of games on the market. We've long reached the point where there are too many games for one person to experience all of them. Even if you only stuck to popular, modern, single player games, during the time it takes you to take one game off your list, another two have taken its place. Meanwhile, the lifespan of multiplayer games are tied to their player base and their popularity. In order to extend these, developers now launch frequent time-locked content updates and cosmetics that reel you back in every few months. This perpetual cycle of FOMO is designed to keep players playing one game forever. So while you might be settled down into Destiny and are enjoying the latest content, your friends might be off somewhere else, stuck in another game that they feel invested in. In fact, Games have monetized the fear of missing out in the form of one of my least enjoyed features of modern gaming, the Battle Pass, digitized paid FOMO that you sign up for in its purest form. For $20 or so, you have the chance to earn cosmetics for your game based on how much you play in about 90 days. Don't play enough? Get soured on the game? Want to play literally anything else instead? Once the Battle Pass season is over, you can't earn those cosmetics ever again. Systems like Battle Pass and competitive seasons are designed to keep players playing the same game and nothing else. If designers can create a battle pass that keeps the player playing all the way until the end of the season, then game developers can tempt them again with another set of exclusive paid cosmetics for the next season. And so the cycle continues on and on. I'm going to dig deeper into battle passes and in-game monetization in a future video, so I'm going to leave it alone for now. But what I will say is that there's no doubt that these systems are lucrative. They wouldn't be in so many games if they weren't. But when battle passes are time restricted this way, it makes it incredibly difficult to convince your friends to play much of anything else at all. Hey Ben, Kate and I are going to go play the new Borderlands game. I know it's one of your favorite series. Do you want to come join us? Uh, no. Uh, thanks though. You, you have fun. Are you using battle passes again? <laughs> No! I hate seeing you like this. <laughs> you want some battle pass? Competitive games feature another element that encourages long-term play and dedication. The potential that the more you play, the more your skills in the game improve. Some skills are transferable within genres. Sure, spatial awareness, your aim, callouts, these are all important across a bunch of first person shooters. But other learned knowledge, like the memorization of maps or ability combos, the spawn frequency of items, other game specific elements, these increase the difficulty of bringing players from one game to the next. MMOs have similar barriers to entry and crossplay. Not only are players often paying a monthly cost to be able to access the game, but the release of a new expansion or update or event tends to draw in dedicated players back into the mad rush to be the first to experience that new content. My friends and I have probably spent more time with Thrall than we have with our own parents. Yet, for months, I've been trying to convince them to jump into Final Fantasy XIV now that the game is free to play until level 60. Most often, I'm met with the excuse of having too little time or the fear that they might fall too deep into an MMO again, or concerns over whether the gameplay will be similar or better than World of Warcraft's. Emily, I see you watching XQC gamble all day when you could be gambling in a real casino. Eh? Gaming together is getting harder as more options are made available to us, and even more difficult now that the price of some AAA games are rising to $70 a pop. I'm coming to terms with how difficult it is to convince my friends to collectively drop 
$270 on a single game to play together, especially if they don't think they'll enjoy it in the long term. But it is possible. And here's what worked for me. Money. Okay, so not really money, but it was my first approach. As I'm writing this video, the holiday season is right around the corner. Not only are we getting bombarded by a ton of new games, but it's a great time to think about gifts for your friends. I know I love getting games as a gift, especially if it means I get to bring my friends closer together again. If you can't find a physical copy of a game in store, you'll probably be able to gift it to your friends via the online marketplace for your console or on PC. The Steam and the Humble Store on PC both allow you to gift games to your friends as well. Epic, still a little bit behind the times. Just make sure that everyone is on the same ecosystem or that the game supports cross-play multiplayer so that there are no issues teaming up. Immediately after the holidays, there are typically big sales on games as well. So if you're tight on cash, you can wait a little bit for whatever the hell this is to drop in price a little bit. Cheeky bastards. If you're friends and you can't seem to settle on a single game or don't quite know what to play together, another option is subscribing to a service like the Xbox Game Pass. Probably the single highest value game service today. You can subscribe for like $1 for your first month and $15 after that and get unlimited access to tons and tons and tons of games. We've got a couple of thoughts on how the Xbox Game Pass is destroying your favorite games that I'll save for a future video, but for the time being, while you're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ignorant to the absolute injustice going on behind the scenes, then you should seriously check out the Game Pass. It is, as its name suggests, even a great option for friends groups across the PC and console divide. Microsoft has been pushing for cross-platform multiplayer support in recent times, and there are a ton of options on the Game Pass that support this. I highly recommend, if you haven't checked it out already, Grounded is a beautiful, really fun four-player experience that is perfect for groups across Xbox and PC. If buying a new game or paying for Game Pass is out of the question, then check out the multitude of free multiplayer games out there, especially if you and your friends are on PC. Free games have come a long, long way thanks to freemium models like Battle Passes. Man, I can't believe I've talked about Battle Passes twice in one video, not about Battle Passes. Games like Overwatch 2 are free to play now, and despite the community outrage around the monetization strategy of the game, the gameplay itself is still great. On PC, you'll find the occasional free weekend on Steam as well, which is a great way to get your friends to check out a new game without too much time or any money invested in it at all. Look, uh, life gets busy. Many of us fall out of touch with friends simply because we don't make time for them. But planning a game night can be as simple as being the one to send a text or a DM. Think of somebody you really loved gaming with and send them a message right now. I'm serious, I'll do it too. Did you do it? I know you probably belong to a hundred Discord servers like I do, but creating one just for your friends can be a great way to keep in touch. I was recently adopted by a friend's Discord group, and now I play Dead by Daylight with a dedicated team a few nights a week. It's worth mentioning that a big part of playing games with your friends is in saying yes when you're invited to something. Maybe that means that you're not playing exactly the game that you want to at the time, but saying yes has a potential to open you to other opportunities in the future, to meet new friends, or to be able to propose your own games. Look at you, you little go-getter. I feel a sensation in the force, like a million fingers are frantically typing away. What if I don't have friends to play with? Maybe your friends just don't play the games you wanna play, or you're looking to cut out some toxic friendships from your life and start fresh. Honestly, good on you for taking action. Life is too short to deal with people like that. There's some great places to start when looking for new friends who play the same games as you. First off, check the game's official and unofficial Discord servers. Reddit is usually pretty good for this. Multiplayer games almost always have a looking for group channel that you can use to meet new friends and play with. I found my original PUBG squad this way. We were playing a match of PUBG almost every weeknight for over a year together. We got so close that the squad eventually actually flew out to visit and hang out in real life. It was pretty cool. If you prefer to play a variety of games, you can join a bunch of Discord servers, or you can find servers that cater specifically to the type of people that you're looking for or feel comfortable with. 
There are gaming Discord servers for LGBTQIA plus gamers, for girl gamers, for boomer gamers, you name it. Many of these places are highly moderated, safe places for you to be yourself. The only thing you have to do is take that first step yourself and join them. It can feel really overwhelming like your best days of gaming are behind you, but that's not true. Oftentimes the real issue standing in the way is that we misremember how we built those friendships in the first place. By putting ourselves out in the world, by making time to keep in touch with others, by scheduling time to just hang out together with no expectations. As your life gets busier, remember, maintaining friendships takes work. But dang if it isn't worth it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Max Neal, and this, this is Voxel. It's a channel focused on the conversations of the art, culture, and the future of video games. I did all the talking this time around, so now it is your turn. I wanna hear about your experiences playing games with friends. Have you kept a game group going, or are you struggling to keep your friends on board with new games? I wanna hear your stories. We might even feature them on a future episode. And don't forget, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to us on Patreon. If you hated it, give it a big old thumbs down. Otherwise, see you later, gamers.